welcome to another episode of New Game Plus. I'm joined by Tim. Uh, been a long time since we've uh, filled these particular seats. Yes, yeah, it's uh, like um, uh, almost 248 episodes ago yes. we first did this. So yeah. uh, it's been a very long time and it, it, it's an interesting episode for this to happen on. It's Battle Arena Melbourne 10. Yes. So big esports event six years ago when we started. Who would have thought we would be sitting looking at not only BAM, but IEM? Yeah, like in the same in the same I guess month period. Yeah, massive tournaments on the global circuit as well. It's not small like fighting games. It's not. It's, it's not small lands or anything. It's correct. big prize money. It's big players as well. Correct. So and and that is why we're really excited to bring you our coverage of BAM Ten. And we're going to do that straight away. We're going to say we'll wax lyrical at the end. But for now, you're stuck with Jack. Enjoy BAM Ten. <laughs> Friends here at BAM 10, uh, back at the Melbourne Convention Centre after last year. It's now been running for 10 years and uh, Meg is on the show floor to bring us all of the biggest and best and all of the new stuff on the BAM show floor. Now we all know at Battle Arena Melbourne there's a massive Smash community here with Melee and on Wii U. But this is the first time Nintendo have been here at such a capacity. Behind me are tournament areas for Splatoon 2 and Pock and DX and it's exciting. They're getting hands on with grassroots with all their biggest fans and giving away prizes for the winners of all their games. But essentially I talked to Jordan, the Australian representative, about why they're here and what they wanted to achieve by being a fan. Uh, we just wanted to see what was going on with the community, like seeing what kind of presence we would see from both Pokken Tournament Deluxe and from Splatoon 2 as well. And it's been awesome to see just like how the community works, how nice they are to each other. Isn't it the best? I love the vibe here. It's like anyone can come and feel a part of it, even if you have no experience or you're not really passionate about it's like particular titles here. It's one of those things like it's a great place to meet new people and even people you play games with online, you might not have met them in the flesh before. And I think Splatoon and Pockin are a really great example of that. Now I've got Ali here next to me beside me who is managing those and like I guess coaching everyone to get the best results and win. How are you going today? Yeah, doing all right. Actually, I've been doing a little bit of everything, playing, organizing, and just hanging out with the community. So a lot of the players here today are regulars at those uh, LAN events. But we also have some interstate players, mostly who are here for other games. I think some players came down for Smash, some players came down for Street Fighter, or even just to spectate, and they're playing right now having fun. I think that's the best thing about it. I mean, even if you never played Splatoon or you want to, you play casually, but you want to sort of get more involved, this is the best way to experience it as well. One of the most exciting booths here at Battle Arena Melbourne this year is the Indie Showcase. And I'm in love with it because not only have we given them the chance for some indie developers and designers to come here and showcase their own fighting games, which are still in early development and coming out later this year, but I've had the chance to play them and watch people play them and get hands on before release. So we have two titles here, Hyper Jam, and it's a top-down Far Cry Blood Dragon, beautiful graphic style, where it's action-packed in an amazing four-player game. It's great to get some feedback for some um especially from the fighting game community who are, I guess appreciate the more technical details of the game. So yeah, we've tried to have a real focus on the physicality and fluidity of the combat, um, which kind of makes it yeah, feel more like a fighting game than like a like sort of a MOBA, like a lot of top game, down games are. Yeah, Is this um, the best BAM you've ever seen? Yeah, it's uh, actually the only BAM I've ever seen. Oh, wow. Yeah, a bit strange to experience it for the first time as an exhibitor, but it's still awesome and yeah, to see so many fighting game fans in one place and um, yeah, a lot of familiar faces too. I also got the chance to play Dimensions Versus and that one's like a Smash Bros side-scrolling platformer fighting game which is an amazing energetic four player too which has got some really incredible weapons and character designs. Yeah, so Dimensions Versus is a free-to-play platform fighter for the PC. Uh, we're releasing in early access August 31st, I believe. So essentially our entire team is super, super, super keen on Super Smash Brothers, as with a lot of people here at BAM. Mm -hmm. um, so we spend most of our lunch breaks during work doing that, in between working on our game, other game projects as well as film projects. I love that. And why did you decide to come to BAM 10 to showcase your game? Um, to be perfectly honest, we gave a little test trial at another BAM event, which was Catch Warriors. Um, and it was it was amazing and we had so many people playing the game and we've exhibited at PAX as well. So one of the biggest thrills as an indie game developer is getting people to play your game and going, hey, we love this, um, when can we play it and can we try it out at the next event? So here we are at the next event. Today 
today I spoke with Lewis Mitchell from Twitch ANZ. He's the partner associate that looks after the brand and the local community in the fighting game scene. This year at Battle Arena Melbourne, it's the first time they've had a physical presence here and it's super exciting because they have an announcement to make. They have a new initiative that really supports the grassroots local community in the fighting game scene and not only are they uh, get here to support and really bring in influencers and streamers alike, they also really want to, they've created this new initiative that has a point system of a tournaments online and land for the next 12 months to really strengthen the ANZ talent pool to bring like the best talent to EVO next year in Las Vegas. Super exciting. How are you going this morning? Yeah, oh, this, I'm great. Like this is so much fun. I love seeing this all come together and honestly, first BAM. So seeing the yeah it's yeah first first time seeing the fighting game community really get together and like this this seems like their home. We're here to kind of celebrate a new program that we're putting together, which is kind of we definitely see an amazing scene here that we want to take to the next level. And I, I think one of the problems that esports has in Australia, we we are a little bit behind the eight ball on on the Europeans and the North Americans and to an extent like the Japanese and the Korean definitely the Koreans. Koreans are way further ahead than us. So we, we do have that talent gap and we do have that skill gap that we need to try and bridge. It's massive. I think it's partly to do with our internet speeds here in Australia. Absolutely. Like our players can't like, upskill online because the lag and the ping is ridiculous. Exactly. So it makes sense that people are getting behind these local community events and really loving playing like face to face with people they've played online with for a long time. Yeah, you, you raised a really interesting point that there is that level cap. Like no matter, whenever you have a closed ecosystem, you're gonna reach a level where you're the best of of this group, but there's there's better people out there. And we, we want people going out there and playing the best in the world. Yeah. So it's why we've teamed up with Couch Warriors and, and why we're gonna be running a year long tournament, which is gonna be a point system yeah. for Smash, it's gonna be for Street Fighter um, and, and Tekken. Tekken, and Tekken as well. Yeah. And the, it's, it's gonna create a top eight, so we're gonna find the best eight players in each of those games across the country. They're gonna come here Next year, this time next year, they're going to play off in a round eight ANZ only tournament. A winner of each of those is going to go to EVO. People really want to find out more. Where can they go to read all the fine print? So at the moment, uh, we don't have the full release as of yet. Yep. Uh, if you follow the Twitch ANZ, so it's Twitch underscore ANZ Twitter, uh, also the Couch Warriors Twitter, but we're, we're going to be working through all of those details over the next probably month or so. Yep. And the really good thing about it is, uh, working with Jason, is that it's not going to be just a closed Couch Warriors tournament. So it's going to be, there'll be certain stipulations that if you fulfill that and you're putting on your own tournaments, as long as it's, let's say, streamed and as long as you're you're happy to stick to the same format as as the Couch Warriors tournament is going to be, you can be added to that tournament as well. So That's so really, huge. It's, it's for everyone. It's to try and... What we really want to do is get this umbrella going and, and get all of those segregated little communities that are around, especially in places like Perth that feel like they, they can't really get anywhere, bring them all together, give them a chance and give them the opportunity to potentially get on the main stage at EVO if like, they do an amazing job over there. You're going to train with the best and luckily the best are under this roof. So I hope you enjoy the rest of BAM this weekend and get amongst it. But thanks so much for your time. Really appreciate it. No problem at all. Loving it. Absolutely loving it. This dude said it was going to be free. And it is not free. It is definitely not free. It is the opposite of free. But they're actually overcharging you right now. You're working hard, my man. That's right. And this guy, Backstar. Up. Two. Yo, he caught one. two of them. I'm telling you right now. If I catch two characters, I'm always going to spark, bro. I, I have to. I'm trying to kill that character. I'm going to spin in all the meter, too. Pretty early, so he might not have gotten a kill, but still. Nice, good confirm. Baxter on tournament point right now. And he, after the reset, working on a 3-0. Yeah, working on a 3-0. Okay, all right. Nice, and seriously, getting this 21 out early is going to be amazing. He gets the switch, so good. Good corner carry, let's go. Taking it slow, we see. Uh, Sitting, letting that, that Android 21 regen though. He's still got that team going in, exactly what he wants. Oh, oh wow. Two age. Great anti air. He's gonna get a corner for the team. He's got five meters to play with. And yeah, he's gonna I don't blame him. 
Now, I think this might just leave him at 1 HP, which does mean probably gonna have a spark in mind. No! Nope. And that wasn't even the last hit. It was like one or two apps. Whoa. He did spin a lot of music. Yeah, he did. Sure. Just raw Tatsu. Yamcha with the backup, just like the good old days. Baxter with such a commanding lead on tournament point right now. Imagine when you see that, that, that S neutral come into play. A lot of jumping back, controlling that neutral with just S to try to fix for a hit. One bar beat him, he's gonna get you a small combo. Mega pressure from Tyler right now. Nice, works out this time. Okay, yeah, S three ball. Just the knockdown, are you gonna spend it? Smart. Smart. <laughs> oh. Oh, okay. What a tag, and it's gonna let Goku regen all that health. Tries to go nice. for a little mini reset right there in the middle of the screen. Not gonna work out. Vegeta finds the hit. Dylan's looking a lot better. Okay. A lot of good damage on there right now. And he still has all three of his characters. There's so much need to be spent on this. I don't want to play with the neutral. Nice, just get away from that Vegeta assist straight away with that vanish. Man, that Yamcha is definitely helping him out. Yeah. Oh, Baxter. In a heavy combo with Dylan. Got a corner position. The two very honest characters. Baxter. Oh. oh. Really late reflex works out. Calls out Yamcha for the help. And now he's fighting his way out of this corner. Baxter. Oh, Baxter with a great throw. Alright, you spin the level three. No. Uh oh, watch spot. The longest combos. No, nice the man. Two ways. Gonna bring him down to the ground. Level one. Level two. Level one. Two. Level one. Not enough. Spark regen just gets it. Oh, tries to go for the low. Oh, it went for the cross up. Yes. Defense is looking really good. Finally gets opened up. Baxter in trouble. He does have four bars. Definitely do it. With the final flash. One down, two to go. Baxter with sparking. Dylo better stop playing. Oh, Yamcha. Bringing it out. In these clutch situations. And there's fresh, so much pressure on the line right now. Are you even thinking about that right there? Are you even thinking about it? Do you play against Yamcha that often? Can't be swinging right there, bro. Oh, what a challenge here. All right. Oh, the sparking just to make sure. <gasps> FTP goes unpunished. Coming Baxter, in. right now. Bro. Oh, Ooh. man. And Baxter, full support of Brisbane, Queensland, the Gold Coast. All here looking to see their boy win. Plus four. And great interruption there. Okay. Tyler. He's got his work cut out for him. Sparky just went away. He really hit Yamcha with his level three. A non-recoverable life at this point. All right. Good time. More stagger pressure. Micro dashes right now. Baxter not scared. And no throws coming out at all. And finds the gap. If he can finish this off, this will be it. And Baxter is your BAM 10 Dragon Ball Fighters champion. Dilu, you didn't want that. You definitely didn't want that, bro. I told you what happened. You can't say that you're not, a, that this is gonna be free. It definitely does not work that way, ladies and gentlemen. So congratulate, he goes back into the cage to congratulate him after the pop-off. He came out to pop up, went back, he's like, whoa, whoa, wait, there was someone else playing. Oops. <laughs> Ando with his... Uh... But our first place, Mr. Baxter, Lola's got the trophy for you. Round of applause. Congratulations back to our first BAM champion. And that trophy, that's a BAM classic. We have used those trophies for 10 years. <laughs> oh, really? <laughs> so just the boxing glove. I respect it. Shout out to the kangaroo. <laughs>
but Tokido and now Tokido ready for it. Looking to close out the tournament if he can take this set. Sien not gonna let him have it though. No hand here by Sien again. Tokido, what a confirm wow. on Very the Very late to confirm. Tokido special. Demon Flip though taken to the corner. V reversal. Coming. No pressure. Yep. And caging Sien in the corner yet again. Can Sien find the answers? He's got full kunai stock, gets the confirm. A bit of damage here. And Tokido's defense not caving in. Look at the spacing. Anti-air again. Ooh, very risky to jump in like that. What was that kunai? Ooh. Could have been a very uh, simple cross-up. Sien just uh, overthinking a little bit there. Tokido looking very dominant with his movement here. Super on deck as well. Any hit could be confirmed into it. Gets the forward throw. V skill on the mid deck. Very Kunai unfortunate. Kunai to stop the yeah, fireball. Yeah, the V trigger ready, but all oh, right dang. into it. Ran into the fire like a box to a lamp. And Sien with such a strong sequence coming out, interrupting so many moves, and then all of a sudden, Tokido Round landing two. that fireball activate. Tournament point round. for Echo Fox. Tokido. This is a big moment for him here in Battle Arena Melbourne. And Sien. He's got a very awful battle now. Let's see if Sien chooses to be more uh, conservative or... Tokido, look at the bold movement walking forward all up into his grill. Oh, right heavy now, uh, I really wish Sien to be more aggressive and as well as take more chances, really. Sien is too hesitant to press buttons. EXDP again, get me out of here. Get a little bit of a breather, but he's gonna actually continue the pressure, otherwise Momentum is all on Tokido right now, setting a healthy life lead. B trigger though on Sien. Who gets the DB punish? By Tokido. Baiting it with the Kunai. Now, what is the mix up? Don't give Sien a chance. Switch. Gets the conversion. Oh, he's gonna wait. Oh, wasn't ready for the punish. Counter hit confirmed. This could be and yes. This is gonna be it, most likely. Tokido taking it up. Kuretsuha and Tokido. Is your Battle Arena Melbourne 10 Street Fighter 5 champion? And shout out to Sienna, strong showing there, but and unfortunately course, yes. he could not stop the raging demon himself. And that is BAM 10 come to a close. Another fantastic year. Thank you to Jack and for everyone for joining us. Congratulations to our winners. But Tim, we mentioned 248 at the start. Yes, it's a, it's a special number. It for is us. a special number because people would think obviously the round numbers are going to be special. And they have been. We've always celebrated yep. 250 and 100 and all that kind of stuff. Uh, but 248 is one more than we made of level three. So level yes. three was 247 episodes officially in the books at C31. This is episode 248 of New Game Plus. Uh, your process, how did you, what did you think when we first started it compared to where you're sitting now? Uh, when we first started, we're all very, uh, very new to it. Yeah. Ab apart from yourself, yeah, you yeah. had previous experience, but a lot of the level three crew were just uh, students yeah. and people that just really love games and really wanted to share their passion about so video I, games. I, I, know, I know the story of this young fellow who lived in Brighton and he used to watch it on C31 and then his mate would watch it through his window, <laughs> uh, as, as, so, I mean, and that I mean that was your start. You yes. know what I mean? And and like it's been interesting to see, especially people like yourself. You know, Don obviously, Kirsty's gone off to do her thing. All of you guys have just done so well, and I'm I'm glad to see that you're all being adults and you're all being responsible and all. Like, <laughs> and it sucks that we can't have you on the show as often. But it, you know, it, for me, seeing you guys grow and seeing what you guys have gotten out of it, and even providing these opportunities has been worthwhile for me. So. Yes, definitely the opportunity for young people to get on TV and usually pretty uh, sheltered individuals, yep. uh, very introverted, um, and it gives people the opportunity to come out and express themselves. And, and so that, that was kind of the big thing when we went from Level 3 to, to New Game Plus was we were trying not necessarily to, to reinvent the wheel, but to, to offer those opportunities. I mean, we've, we've been to, what, too many E3s? You nearly died one year. <laughs> yes. Um, <laughs> we've been to too many uh, Tokyo Game Shows. I think, we, I think the crew has missed the Tokyo Game Show in the last six years. <laughs> um, you know? 
we've been to, someone's been to Europe for the covering stuff. I've been to a Smite World Tour. Uh, we've had local interviews. Obviously, Ben Michael Boone was on our first yes. episode. Uh, I mean, is there, is there something to you that, that stands out or is it just, you know? C Certainly meeting the Polish developers of Witcher 3. Nice. Fantastic game, great guys, and they always had a laugh because their, uh, their demo build kept breaking. And didn't they have, like, <laughs> that, that was like, they were giving away free Jivitz on the stand, yes. weren't they? So yeah. that's nice as well. That always helps. Look, to me, again, we, we've had all these people, we've had, you know, we met, you know, Suda51, uh, Warren Spector, I'm not the name dropper, we're, just, we're talking all these people. Lots of, we've offered all lots of local games their opportunities. Yep. To me, it's just about providing those opportunities and providing them in an, in an environment that was, you know, a little bit better than the old ways because, you know, we, we, we were able to try and expand what we were doing and, and offer the chance to go overseas and offer the chance to try and do all this stuff. And I know we, we managed it, Tim. I, I wasn't sure when we were getting closed off C31 whether we would get there or whether, you know, the commercial television would even exist by the time we got to 248. Yep. Um, and yet... Here we are, and it's, it is good to see you, you know, coming in, even though you do have all of these other obligations, and you know, you're a grown-up boy now. So, uh, like, is there something you still? I mean, you, you still come back occasionally. We obviously talk esports and stuff a lot. You know, is there something you still want to see, to get out of it, or do you think you just come back for the love of it? I uh, come back for the love of it, definitely. Yeah. Uh, moving forward, playing, still playing a lot of games, still watching a lot of esports, and esports is definitely a passion of mine at the moment. Yeah, poor uh, um, it's okay. Uh, yeah. <laughs> Uh, I'm branching out into a few other games, just keeping touch on Overwatch League and yep. LCS and a few others, a few developing esports as well. And it's really interesting to see the scene grow yeah. uh, and gaining mainstream appeal. Yeah, and, and it really has. And that, that is probably the biggest, I would say, I would argue probably the single biggest change since we started is as much as everything else, and there's been obviously we've had Gurmagurt, we've had all the yep. nastiness there and all that, but the single biggest change is how esports has led the role of acceptance of gaming in the mainstream. So yes. it's been interesting to see that. And obviously, you know, we do do BAM and we do lots of live streams of esports events. You should definitely check those out. But I think we kind of have to, to do the list, don't we? You know, we have to thank David and Liam yes. and Kate and Jody and uh, Matt and Shaney. Obviously, Shaney. God, poor Shaney. <laughs> um, you know, we've got you know, all the contributors. We've had Jordan. We've had uh, Kirsty, obviously. You know, we've got Trey. We've got all these people. Kenny. All these people who have come and, and contributed to this madhouse that is yes. uh, New Game Plus. Matt, you know, we, we, it's hard because we're forgetting people. Gerard, yep. Yep. you know, like we're doing political interviews now. Like well, We've uh, had lots people. of people contribute yes. in many different ways, whether it's gaming, whether it's popular culture, whether it's Gerard and yeah. you know, important serious business interviews. Yes. Um, yeah, so. But it, it, we've just had so many people involved with the show and... Everyone contributing to make this great show happen. It's just amazing that it happens every week. It is. And if you will continue to watch us, we will continue to make it. And hopefully C31 lasts for another 10,000 years, 100,000 years, Morty. Uh, but hopefully we do. And uh, on that note, we say goodbye. Don't forget to check out newgameplus.tv. Uh, don't forget to watch us on Channel 31 and what? YouTube, Twitter, Facebook. Twitch. Twitch. All of the above. And I wanted to save this for the very last one. To Sab and Kane, we miss you, we love you, we will hopefully see you soon. Oh yeah, and who could forget the uh, Chuka Palmer? <laughs>